So in this video tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how you can write and handle JavaScript promises. So promises are a way of handling asynchronous JavaScript code, which when JavaScript encounters, it doesn't wait for. So on the front end, we're talking about things like HTTP requests uh, or image resource loading. And on the back end, we're talking about things like database interactions and request handling. So for these type of actions, we may want to do something after they have loaded. So after we've received data back from HTTP request, for example, that means we need to wait for the result. And promises are really the modern way to do this in JavaScript. They replace callback functions. So here's the problem just to demonstrate at the top of this uh, script. We've got a result variable here, not assigning any value to it. And then a set timeout, which is an asynchronous bit of code. That means JavaScript doesn't wait for it to complete before continuing on and processing the rest of the code. Um, and that means when we log this result to the console, it is going to be undefined because by the time it was executed, uh, data wasn't assigned to result. So we end up with that undefined value, as you can see here. So we can solve this the modern way using promises. And the way we write a promise, so before we go on to handling, I'll show you how to write a promise. Uh, we call on the special promise object. So this is an inbuilt object in JavaScript, and we can create a new, it helps us to create a new promise. So it accepts a function. And what we do in that function is we execute whatever it is we want to do and afterwards we can do the handling so in terms of what it is it's this set timeout and then we'll be seeing how we can log the result to the console in a moment so just okay now within a promise we have two parameters available to us resolve and reject now there's nothing special about the terms um, in the first position is resolve and in the second position is in reject it's always the same you could use different words but this is just the words that are used by convention and the way that these work is, is they work a little bit like return does inside a function once you call either one of them this then returns a result and processing stops so I'm actually going to make a change to this set timeout, instead of saving data to uh, result, I want to handle the result in the promise. So I'm going to call resolve. So what's happening in this promise now is our timeout is executing and we're calling resolve inside the timeout. So after one second, this promise is going to resolve successfully. It could also uh, reject if there was an error, if this was a HTTP request or something like that. So let's now move on to the handling of the result. And so this uses special syntax. Um, we use dot then to handle a successful result. And if there's an error, we catch any error using catch syntax here. So both of them accept a function, an anonymous function. So we can use just arrow functions for this. And as a parameter in the then function, we have available to us the result. Um, so I can just log whatever that is to the console. And in this instance, that's going to be data. So this is resolving successfully. And I've got this value. So data is going to be logged to the console. Um, because it's resolving it successfully, the dot then um, function that I've passed in is being executed. Now, if it was rejected, then it would execute the catch statement. So this accepts a function as well. We have available to us uh, whatever's passed in to reject. And we can also say something here. I'm actually just going to say error. Okay. And that should now be a working promise that after one second, executes dot then and logs our result to the console. So if I head over here, we've got our undefined still coming up. Ah, it's showing error because it's rejecting at the moment. 
So I'm going to change this to resolve and then we should get the data back after one second. So there you go, we have our data back. Now, just something to note with the dot then, you can continue this and do more asynchronous functions with the result. I'm not gonna do anything asynchronous here, but just know that whatever is returned is available as the parameter in the next one. So if I say data plus, if I say, sorry, res plus one here, this is gonna be the return value. And then in the next dot then, um, that's going to be available. I can just log the result and you'll see that it will be a modified version of the result. So we can continue going down the dot then chain and modifying the result until we're happy and we can include more asynchronous actions inside there. Now, this isn't the usual format for handling a promise. Usually we save a promise uh, to a variable and then handle the result somewhere later in our code. So that gives us a bit more flexibility. So I'm going to get rid of this modification and save this promise inside a new variable called my promise. Then I can handle the result by somewhere later in my code saying my promise and then using the same syntax afterwards. So this should show the same result. Let's take a look. So we're getting, okay, there's been some sort of error here. So my promise dot then is resolving dot catch. Okay, so I need to change this to console log to see the result again. So I'm going to see the result again in the console. So this is working again as it was. Now it may be tempting to think of a promise as a bit like a function but it doesn't work exactly like a function at all. In fact, a promise executes straight away. It doesn't have this function scope. So if I was to console log something inside of the promise, like hi, okay. And then I look at the console log, you're gonna see hi is executed straight away. So the promise is executing immediately. And this is the case even if we are not sort of handling the result down here, it ex executes all by itself. And that's what we usually want. Uh, we usually want a process that's going to take some time to execute immediately. But in case you don't want that behavior, then you can prevent a promise from executing straight away by placing it in a function, and then it's inside function scope. So I'm gonna say, call this function my promise in, in function. And then I can just pass in all of this into the function. And I also need to pass all of the handling into the function. Because it's inside the function scope, I wouldn't be able to access uh, it outside. So this is really nice with Prettify. It's making my code uh, nice and well formatted when I, when I save. Now, if I was to um, execute my promise function, then this is going to have the same result as we saw last time. You're going to see that the um, high is there immediately and then data comes later. But if I was to call my promise in function with some kind of time delay, let's say by uh, one second, And what you're going to see is that after one second, high is then executed and then one second later data. And that's because our promise is no longer executing straight away. So this is how you can make a promise execute with some sort of time delay in case you don't want it to start uh, immediately. You could also call the promise dynamically in response to a user action, pressing a button, something like that. So now that we've explored this, you will be able to use any kind of inbuilt process that returns a promise within JavaScript, such as the inbuilt uh, fetch function for making HTTP requests. So if you want to use the fetch function, it works. This is for a get request. So fetch is available to us on the global window. We pass in the 
API endpoint here that we want to reach. And then we handle the result, whatever that is, in the dot then dot catch syntax. So fetch is based upon promises. And we can do this in exactly the same way as we did for the promise we have written here. So that's the basics of writing and handling promises in JavaScript.